Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to give you the best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be having a look at railguns, so we're going to cover the different types of railguns and the best starting ships for any budding railgun pilots. From there we'll have a look at progressing up in regards to small ships and we will have a brief stop and look at the Catalyst and the Cormorant, because a lot of you guys have requested that I cover those two ships in a bit more detail, and then we'll look at where you progress up from there in regards to smalls. We will also have a look at the progression route if medium rail guns sound like your kind of thing as well, so do stay tuned for that. Now if you enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, consider subscribing to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Let me know what topics you want to see me cover in a future video, either by commenting down below or on the social media channels along the bottom of your screen now. And finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and the content I'm putting out, then you can do so by coming, us, uh, coming and finding us on Patreon. Woohoo! It's getting tough to say this sometimes. Anyway folks, that's said and done, let's jump in and have a look at Railguns. Like almost all of the other weapon types in EVE Echoes, with decomposers being the notable exception to this rule, railguns come in a couple of different range varieties. You have the short-ranged snub-nosed railguns and the long-ranged rifled railguns. Now let's have a look at the rifled railgun here to see its stats and how they compare to turrets of other weapons. Now ultimately, if you're interested in learning about turrets and properly how they work and what all these stats mean, I do have a video already out on exactly how turrets work, so I do recommend you go and watch that as well to get a complete understanding of what all of these statistics here mean. Now, railguns have a damage priority mainly towards kinetic. They deal mainly kinetic damage with a little bit of thermal on the side. This means that the kinetic damage is pretty good against armor tanks. It's not quite as good as explosive, but it is pretty good against armor. Most armor doesn't resist kinetic all that well, but the thermal means that you are a little bit better against shields than you would be with purely explosive and kinetic damage. That gives railguns a great middle of the path kind of feel to them. They're good against armor and they're good against shields without being exceptional at either. Now if we look down the statistics page here you can see as well that like laser cannons they do have a activation cost in gigajoules, they do use a little bit of your capacitor to fire each time, something that cannons don't have, but you can also see here they've got a very high optimal range to a rifled railgun, 9 kilometers standard optimal range with an accuracy fall off of 5. They're like cannons in that they have a gradual accuracy fall off, but they're also like lasers in that they have a fairly hefty upfront optimal range as well. This gives rifled railguns a very long range damage profile. It means they drop off very, very gradually. You get a good, solid range out of these, of effect a good effective range out of these. Now, if we compare this then to the snub-nosed railguns, you'll see that again, we've got a similar damage profile here with the kinetic and the thermal. You'll notice that the DPS is astronomical for a meta level one small fitting, um, but that does come with a hefty cost. They activate at four seconds at piece, so they fire quickly, but they've got a piddly optimal range of 1.5 kilometers and an accuracy fall off of two. That means to be at a full effective range, you need to be at one and a half kilometers away, and you're doing no damage at all by time that you're at five and a half kilometers. That's <laughs> that makes small snub-nosed railguns, in my opinion, probably the worst weapon system currently in EVE Echoes, with the notable exception of a couple of ships, like for example the Atron 2. Any of the interceptor ships, snub-nosed work really well on because you can actually maintain that range. If you're going in something like a destroyer, the snub-nosed railguns just cannot maintain that close enough orbit to actually be effective at their damage. So quite frankly, I'm going to be honest, for the most part, don't bother with snub-nosed railguns. But again, notable exceptions which we will cover later in this video. So that's what railguns are and what they do. What are your best starting ships with them? Now, unlike cannons, which are pretty much exclusive to the Minmatar Republic, and lasers, which are exclusive to the Amar Empire, you'll find that railguns actually feature heavily in both the Kaldari State ship tree and the Galente Federation ship tree. Now, ultimately, the main difference between those two ship trees is whether or not you go shield tank, at which point the Kaldari State is probably more your thing, or whether you prefer armor tanking, at which point the Galente Federation serves that better. Ultimately, if you're not caring about your tank and you'll just fit whatever, it's railguns that you're worried about, instead have a look at what the ships look like. If you prefer the look of the Galente ships, go Galente and just learn to armor tank. And if you prefer the look of the Kaldari ships, go for them and just, you know, learn to shield tank. Now, if you've started out as either a Kaldari or a Galente pilot, chances are you've already flown a railgun ship of some kind. Now, there's going to be a lot of backward and forward between these two ships in this video. I do apologize for that. It's the nature of the beast, sadly. 
Now, at tech level 2, you've probably already flown a Merlin if you are a Kaldari pilot. Two high slots, three low slots, can be insured for repairs, and Frigate Command is the bonus skill here. For each level in Frigate Command, you get 5% small railgun damage and 4% shield resistance. So there you can see railguns, shields, Kaldari. If we flick across to the Galente Federation ship tree and look at that same slot there, tech level 2 combat frigate, the Incursus. Again, two high slots, three low slots, can be insured for repairs, and frigate command is still the same skill. And in fact, for every level of frigate command, it's still that same plus 5% small railgun damage, but this time around, rather than 4% shield resistance, you're getting 7.5% armor repairer efficiency. So other than the looks, the main difference here is whether or not you go for shield or for armor, and that is very much going to be the theme going ahead. Now once you hit tech level 3, what ship should you look at next? Well if you're looking for frigates you're sadly going to be disappointed in both ship trees once you hit tech level 3, as the tech level 3 combat uh, frigate for the Galente is the Tristan, which is a drone ship, and on the Kaldari side of things it's the Kestrel, which is a missile ship. That means of course we are going to come up into destroyers where we look at the Catalyst and the Cormorant, and more on the Cormorant in a moment. Now again, these are very similar to the Thrasher, so if you've watched my video on how the Thrasher line of ships work, this is basically the same when it comes to the Catalyst and its sister ship, the Cormorant. Both of them have three high slots, two mid slots, and three low slots. They both get an, a roll bonus of small railgun optimal range, and the skill bonuses for both of them are small railgun operation and destroyer command. Now in terms of the Catalyst, Small Railgun Operation gives you 6% Small Railgun damage per level and 5% Small Railgun accuracy fall off. The Destroyer Command then gives you 5% armor. Now you can see there that's armor tanking, still with railguns, and like with the Thrasher video, I would recommend using the rifled railguns, not just because the snub-nosed ones suck, but because it, uh, the rifled benefit from those roll bonuses an awful lot more. And if we look at the Cormorant, you can see again, still three high slots, two mid slots, and three low slots, exactly the same as the Catalyst, has the exact same roll bonus of 25% small railgun optimal range, and it still benefits from small railgun operation and destroyer command skills. Like with the Catalyst, it's still that same 6% small railgun damage, um, but unlike the Catalyst, rather than fall off, it's 5% optimal range. Now for me, I personally rate the Cormorant a little bit higher on this, simply because that optimal range makes your 100% effectiveness range that little bit longer, whereas accuracy fall off may ultimately increase your range that little bit further, but it, you're not going to be wanting to be right at the maximum range anyway. With both of these ships, you can be comfortably at optimal range. So rather make the optimal range bigger than the fall off is my point. Now Destroyer Command here on the Cormorant you can see gives you 5% shield bonus as well. Obviously 25% shield is very nice um, once you've got that fully trained. From there, with both of those ships, you can of course go up to the Cormorant 2 or the Catalyst 2, which adds an extra high slot in both cases. You get four high slots um, and you start to get more skills here. You can see rather than just damage and optimal range, we're also getting tracking speed. Um, plus additional stats boosted, and once you hit tech level 5 you'd move into the Cormorant Navy issue. Again, still 4 high slots there, still that same optimal range, but you're now you're getting extra damage, extra optimal range, and more bonuses for the Destroyer Command. You're getting that scan resolution thrown in there as well. You do also have the Guardian version. Again, watch my video on the Thrasher Fleet issue versus the Thrasher Guardian to understand why you would go for either of those. In short, the Guardian is the party's tank, whereas the uh, Navy issue is very much all about the damage. So if we just quickly jump back across to the Galante Federation to have a look at the rest of the destroyers there, you do again have the Catalyst 2, same again, extra slot, 4 high slots, 2 mids, 3 lows, and you start adding the rigs. Same bonus of optimal range, again you now have rather than just the damage, you've also got the tracking speed and the fall off um, is a little bit better there. Destroyer Command still gives you the boost of armor, and once you're up at tech level 5 you've got the Catalyst Guardian and you've got the Catalyst Navy issue. Now one thing I should quickly point out about the Catalyst Guardian, if you've watched the Thrasher Guardian video, this uses armor link modules, not shield field, armor link. Don't go and buy yourself a Catalyst Guardian and then try to put a shield field module on it, it won't work. And it's a bad idea anyway, which makes the Catalyst Guardian kind of the opposite of the Thrasher and the Cormorant Guardian. It's all about shield, uh, it's all about using armor rather than shields. Now if we look at the Catalyst Navy issue, again, four high slots, three mids, three lows, two of each of the rigs, same roll bonus for the rest of the Catalysts, get there the additional damage, tracking speed, and fall off, and you add in scan resolution and sensor strength into the Destroyer Command skill bonuses there as well. 
But what if, like me, you're not overly fond of the destroyers and you fancy going for the frigates? Well, ultimately, this is where the uh, the Galente ship has a uh, Galente tree has a very unique ship, and those come in the form here of the Tech Level Four interceptor frigates. Now, that's the Slasher Two, the Condor Two, the uh, Atron Two in the case here, and the Executioner Two. Now, you guys know if you've been watching these videos that these are some of my favourite ships in the entire game at the moment. Speed tanking with these is so much fun. Now, the reason I want to bring a lot of attention to the Atron 2 is because if we scroll down here, you'll see that Frigate Command gives small railgun accuracy falloff and small railgun damage. Flat bonuses there for Frigate Command. These ships, the, these, uh, the, these tackle ships, these interceptor, tier 4 interceptors, because they've got that afterburner velocity bonus and because they have a very good, I don't think you can see it on here, I'm going to need to open up the full thing, they have a very good... Uh, like speed with the uh, afterburner bonus and with the uh, with, with with the inertia modifier. Sorry, I can't think of the words. The inertia modifier and the, uh, the the standard flight velocity of these is very very fast. You can get up close and personal. You can orbit tightly. The Atron Two is the one ship currently in the game that I would actually recommend putting the snub nosed railguns on. Small snub-nosed railguns are absolutely useless on everything except for the Atron 2. And on the Atron 2, they've become their own absolutely marvellous, wonderful thing. In fact, if you head to the market right now, you'll find the faction level, officer level, even like, you know, all of those level, um, the, the, the snub-nosed railguns are dirt cheap. So you can get those early on and be doing massive damage in in an Atron 2 compared to others. It's the, oh, because no one wants snub-nosed railguns. Nobody wants snub-nosed railguns, so they are dirt cheap on the market right now. Get an Atron 2, fit it with the snub-nosed railguns, and have a whale of a time dealing insane amounts of damage to people. From there, however, it's a bit of a dry spell in Tier 5 and Tier 6. Once you hit Tech 7, you do get the Assault Frigates. Now, I've covered the Breacher Assault in a video elsewhere, but the Incursus Assault and later the Merlin Assault are excellent railgun frigates. And these, again, snub-nosed railguns will probably work on these exceptionally well, but we're not at Tech Level 7 yet, so I'm not recommending them, just kind of giving them an honourable mention. You get the three high slots to these, which obviously is a massive amount of damage extra bonuses here for advanced micro warp drive, less of the signature radius penalty and less capacity need, but then you get small railgun damage, small railgun optimal range and armor repairer efficiency for advanced frigate command. That is amazing, that means this thing can get up close and personal very very quickly, orbit in a very tight orbit around, uh, around its target and deal some real damage with snub-nosed railguns. Now again, if we flick back to the Kaldari tree, sadly the Kaldari tree at tech level 4 is not any good for railguns. The interceptor frigate here, as I said, is the Condor 2, which is a missile frigate, so you're not going to be wanting to use this on a, uh, a railgun built character. Once you hit tech level 7, you hit the Merlin Assault, which is almost identical to the Atron Assault. Again, it's whether or not you go for armor tank or shield tank, although in fairness, both of them are speed tanks. Up close and personal, you've got that damage uh, control activation time, you've got the micro warp drive signature penalty and the capacitor need drop, railgun damage, railgun accuracy fall off, and shield resistance. Now, I would ultimately, because it's accuracy fall off compared here, whereas on the Atron 2 it is optimal range, I would go for the Atron 2 just because I rate that a bit more with those blasters because it pushes up the optimal range rather than the fall off is why I'd go for blasters. But if you want to go scram kiting and be at a little bit further range, the Merlin Assault is going to be better with rifled railguns. And that's where you'd go with smalls, but obviously not everyone's focused on smalls, so where would you go for medium railguns? Well, like with small railguns, these can be found both in the Kaldari State and the Galente Federation tree, so let's head across there. Now, neither of the trainer cruisers that you get early on will help here. Obviously, the Kaldari trainer cruiser is the Caracal, which is missiles, and it's the Vexor for the Galente, which is a drone ship. However, in amongst that tech level there, tech level 5, you do have the Thorax prototype for the Galente side of things, which is unique. These are fairly expensive to build, but you'll see four high slots, two mid slots, four low slots, and two of each of the sides, and they are railgun ships. More than just being railgun ships, if you look at their overall defense there, they're actually remarkably tanky. And it's interesting with the Thorax here, because you've got a Thorax prototype, which is not insurable, which is tech level 5, gives you medium railgun damage, medium railgun tracking speed, etc. But once you come up to tech 6, you get the Thorax trainer, which can be insured, despite the fact that it's tech 6. Still, four high slots, two mids, four lows, two of each of the rig types. 
you, this is much more based around tanking though. Here you can see its armor operation gives you the bonus skills and cruiser command then gives you a bit of extra railgun damage and tracking speed. Ultimately, the Thorax Trainer is more about tanking. If you want to try out a Thorax, try and get the prototype, but do be aware that ultimately this thing, it, it's not repairable. If you lose it, it's not repairable, despite the fact that it's a prototype, curiously. If you look at then, you go up to the Thorax itself at tech level 6. This is the mainline version. Again, it's an armor tank. It's all about that extra armor tank. It's got a good overall defensive 12949 to start with. You then get 5% additional armor for each point of armor operation you have. That's huge. That's a 25% bonus to that 12949, which is just massive. This is a tanky ship. Tanky, tanky ship. And Cruiser Command will give you medium railgun damage and medium railgun tracking speed. Now, the reason I say that this is interesting is because if, for example, you've been flying some other kind of cruiser, like a Caracal or a Vexor, and you've been training up Cruiser Command, because, well, you're flying cruisers, why wouldn't you train Cruiser Command? It's Cruiser Command that gives you the railgun damage and the railgun tracking speed. So you can actually jump into one of these without needing to suddenly train up railgun uh, rail skills. You don't need medium railgun skill here for the, thorax uh, for the thorax. Armor operation, you've probably already been training on your route up in any way. And cruiser command, you've been training for your other cruisers. So you can jump into this and you get those bonuses to your railguns. Obviously, medium railgun operation and medium railgun upgrade are still great skills to have, but they're not necessary to get the most out of the ship. Now, if we flick across to the Kaldari side of things, again, if we come up to the cruisers, you can see at tech level 5, it's just the Caracal and the Caracal Trainer, but once we hit tech level 6, we hit the mower. Now, the mower trainer, 4 high slots, 2 mids, 4 lows, and um, the 4 lows is a key point with the mower. This is a ship designed for tanking. You can fit a lot of uh, shield boosters and like uh, shield hardeners, that kind of thing, into those slots there just to keep this thing alive. Again, shield operation and cruiser command. Shield operation increases the shield, and it's cruiser command that gives you the railgun. So if you've been flying a Caracal for whatever reason, um, and you're training up the skills for that, and you decide that actually you'd like to give the mower a go, you don't need to suddenly train up like four skills in medium railgun operation. It's cruiser command that gives you that bonus. Obviously, medium railgun operation, as I said, with the uh, with with the thorax, does help. It's going to boost those modules up in basic, but it doesn't. It's it's not a huge thing for the ship. The ship doesn't get the bonuses from it, just the turrets, which is a big point here. And these things are tanky as all heck again. 12513 is the standard, plus four percent shield resistance for each point of shield operation bonus. Um, and Cruiser Command gives you that medium rail on damage and the accuracy fall off. Now, looking no further than sort of Tech 7, because <laughs> there's not much point going higher than that, if you're looking at battle cruisers when those become available at Tech 7, this is where the Ferox comes in. Again, this is all based on medium railguns, medium railgun optimal range, accuracy fall off, baked in as a roll bonus, advanced medium railgun upgrade increases the railgun damage and optimal range, and Battle Cruiser Command gives you scan resolution. Six high slots, five low slots, and three of the mid slots. Very versatile ship, and again, a whopping overall defense of 24,667, which you can just boost up even higher. It's a tanky, tanky ship, the Ferox. Sadly, if we jump back to the Kaldari ship tree, you will see that there is nothing there at Battlecruiser Tech 7. We have the Myrmidon, which is a drone ship. So if you're looking for a battle cruiser that is railguns, that's where the Ferox is going to come in until you start getting higher up, but we're not going to focus on that just yet. At the start of this video, I did say that I would showcase a fitting for both the Cormorant and the Catalyst. Now, obviously, I've mentioned that it's basically the same fitting that you'd use in the Thrasher line of ships. So, obviously, watching that video will give you a basic breakdown, but I just wanted to showcase it here on a Cormorant. Whether you do this on the Cormorant or the Catalyst, it is exactly the same. And I'm not going to repeat myself, so just use this exact same fitting for the Catalyst. Now, what I've gone for here, in the high slots, we have three Mark III small rifled railguns. Again, it's for that range, optimal range, 12.38 kilometers, accuracy fall off of five, means you're effective at anything from like 22 kilometers down. 22 kilometers is when you start doing nothing and missing all the time. You're 50% uh, effectiveness at 17 kilometers, and anything up to 12 is pretty good. In fact, you can orbit quite comfortably at 12 kilometers. You'll be able to outrange some of the smaller ships, but you can still be dealing a fair punch with your small rifled railguns. Now, ultimately, this means the mid slots here probably look a bit weird. I've got a Mark III Stasis Web of Fire, which only has an optimal range of 10.6. This is designed just in case anything gets up close and personal, like, for example, um, some kind of interceptor or something that just you might struggle to hit otherwise. Hit it with the Web of Fire, slow it down. 
Now, ultimately, the Mark III Small Energy Nosferatu, it's not vital at all. I've put it in there just because I don't like having the slot empty. And ultimately, again, it's if something gets close, I can drain its energy, but it's not at all vital to this build. Now, the low slots that I've gone for is my typical skirmisher low slots. We've got prop, we've got weapon upgrade, and we've got tank. Now for a prop, I've gone here for a small afterburner. Micro warp drive will work just as well here. You're not necessarily trying to speed tank. You can. You can try and speed tank at 10 kilometers and reduce it by having the afterburner running at all times, but you don't need to. You're mainly about just controlling your range manually through careful piloting. The mid slot here, we, sorry, the middle of the low slots we have here is a Mark III magnetic field stabilizer. Like a gyro stabilizer, this is a flat DPS increase. Damage bonus of 5% for having it equipped and a 6.49% when it's activated also reduces the activation time um, of, the, of the modules when, when that Mark III Magnetic Stabilizer is active as well. Finally then, we have Tank in the low slot. Being a Cormorant, it is a Mark III Small Shield Booster that I've put in here. Shield Tank Cormorant. Um, shield Tank Eldari, so we put in a, sh a Small Shield Booster. This is the one fitting that will change if you're flying a Catalyst. Swap the Mark III Small Shield Booster for an Armor Repairer instead. Your shield boosting is pointless on a Catalyst. Do it with Armor instead. Work on focusing, repairing your armor. Now, you'll see here this is a capacitor stable ship. It runs quite optimally, um, very nice and easy, straightforward to use. If you go up to the Cormorant 2 or the Catalyst 2, you just add in an extra turret to the high slot. And once you hit the fleet issue, same sort of thing, same sort of thing. Ultimately, you can see my offensive DPS here is 52.66. That's with me not having anything trained into railguns whatsoever. So I'm not getting that small railgun operation bonus. Um, or any like flat bonuses there because simply put if we jump into the skills here you'll see under railgun i haven't trained anything this is one i'm working towards and um, for when i get into my daredevil now speaking of the daredevil yeah you thought you were going to get away without me talking about a faction frigate didn't you let's have a look at that one enter the Spentis corporation ship tree here under faction frigates there it is the daredevil let's go into a full page on this one because i love it beautiful looking ship you guys know i love my faction frigates and this one it's slightly weirder looking than the dromiel but dear me i just love those sort of those claws to it i don't get why it has a head like though anyway look at its attributes and fittings this thing three high slots three mids three lows across the way defensive here it's very much an armor tank ship so if you're going down the uh, galente route of things you've probably already started training into these um capacitors decent enough capacitors five lock targets very good flight velocity um, here with a decent enough inertia modifier of 1.8 times signature radius is a little bit larger than some of the other faction frigates but still fairly small looking at its trait description you can see here advanced small railgun operation gives a 20 percent increase to small railgun damage so having advanced small railgun operation at five means 100 percent extra small railgun damage we've got three railguns on this thing so those actually fire as if they're six Small railgun accuracy fall off means that they get that extra range to them as well. 50% additional range means again this ship is probably one that you can actually get away with blasters, although I would actually recommend fitting this one with rifled anyway because of the next bit. Advanced frigate command here, stasis webber fire strength, stasis webber fire optimal range, and warp disruptor optimal range as well. This means you can outrange your opponent's webs. You can be moving at staying sort of like 10, 20, 10, 10 15 kilometers away, orbiting at a high speed whilst having them webbed so that they don't orbit you. It allows you to range control. This is a perfect scram kiter and it is remarkably tanky for a ship of its size, especially with some nice, uh, nice armor rigs fitted into there. Anyway, the reason I mention the Daredevil is because if, like me, you love your faction frigates and you're looking for somewhere to go after you've done all of the, uh, the ship tree stuff I mentioned earlier, if you've been using like the Catalysts um, and then the Atron 2 and then the Atron Assault, the Daredevil is the obvious final step to go for there. It is worth mentioning that like the Thorax, we have the Vigilant here as well, Serpentis Tree. This is where you'd go if you're going up those medium uh, medium rail guns, things like the mower and the thorax are into the ferox the vigilant here if we have a quick look at this one again looks a little bit like a thorax doesn't it um, attributes and fittings five high slots three mids five lows very tanky defensive 24 to zero very much an armor tank again decent enough stats across the board there looking at the trait description medium railgun damage uh, 10 percent per level so those uh, th those five actually operate as if they're seven and a half medium railgun accuracy fall off means this gets some decent range to it as well again the stasis web of fire strength optimal range and optimal range on the warp disruptor again means that you can scram people from a distance and just control the flow of combat by stopping them actually controlling the range that they get to fight at you very much get to dictate what range this ship wants to fight at and it packs one heck of a punch while doing it 
anyway, that does bring us now to the end of this video. Hopefully I have explained everything that you need to know in order to get started with railguns and to work out where you go from there, what ships you want to fly in future, which ones you should start out in, and give a basic idea of how to fit it. Railguns for me are not my personal favourite type of, uh, of weapon system in Ebecos. They're a great weapon system, don't get me wrong, I just have only so many skill points that I can allocate and I tend to prefer cannons and lasers first. Obviously those are the ones I go for. Railguns sadly therefore take a bit of a back seat, but they are a fantastic weapon system. Again, whereas lasers are very much designed to cut through shields but struggle on armor, and whereas cannons are great against armor but struggle on shields, the railguns kind of have that middle of the line approach that allows you to do well on both of those without any real negatives of going against either. Great middle of the ground approach, and there's some very, very cool looking ships here. I do love the look of the Cormorant, awesome looking ship. Anyway, folks, I hope that's given you some inspiration and some ideas. If you do have any questions, of course, let me know in the comment section down below. Come join the Catskull Cartel Discord. We are always happy to answer any questions you have and talk all things Eve Echoes. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching all the way to the end here. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.